I'm MTG and welcome to another video for Good Clean Commander. Really excited to jump in today's shenanigans because holy heck, I did not think about the lineup of commanders and the sheer amount of potential and triggers all these would have. So very excited to, you know, show off all this insanity. So I just wanted to give a shout out to some people who have been incredibly supportive and leaving very sweet comments on the last few videos that we had. So thank you to Crovax13 for not just your support with Good Clean Commander, but just the channel in general. It means a lot and it's very, I don't know, uplifting to see positivity like yours. So thank you so much for being so sweet. Uh, and Lauren Wynn, you're awesome. I really appreciate all the kind words as well. The inventor of the moon, uh, which is also just a sweet <laughs> username. Uh, Evid. MTG Josh. MTG Josh is also a content creator who I highly recommend going to check out. Personal Tutor and Charles Ronquillo. Thank you for, you know, your kind comments and again, all your support. So, okay, I'm ready to jump into the game now. <laughs> Let's have a good clean game. Ian is playing Alinda the Dusk Rose. This Death and Taxes deck has a sub vampire tribal thing. His goal is to make creatures die by sacrificing his own or killing his opponents to make Alinda huge and win through commander damage or to go wide with all the vampire tokens she makes. And in his starting hand, he has two swamps, an arcane signet, Zulaport cutthroat, cabal coffers, a plains, and a welcoming vampire. I am playing Rada Drabic of Urborg. This legendary tribal deck leans into my commander's ability to make token copies of other legendary creatures when they die. My main win con is to drain the table out. And in my starting hand, I have an Aetheros God of Passage, Urborg Tomb of Yagma, Wayfarer's Bobble, Murderous Rider, a Massacre Worm, the Meat Hook Massacre, and a Reflecting Pool. Mitch is playing Prosper Tombbound. He's looking to gain card advantage and make treasures through his commander's ability. He plans to win by dealing non-combat damage from ping and drain effects. And in his starting hand, he has a Sensei's Divining Top, Bloodstained Mire, a Mountain, Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth, a Swamp, Brea's Prentice, and a Profane Tutor. Natasha is playing the Locust God. This commander wants to wheel opponent's hands and have Natasha draw a ton of cards to make insect tokens. Hoping to win through Perforos effects or just swinging out with an army of insects, this Izzet commander is ready to shake things up. And in her starting hand, Natasha has a mountain, an island, Memorial to Genius, Cascade Bluffs, Winds of Change, Goblin Electromancer, and an Ashnod's Altar. Ian starts off the game by drawing and playing a Marsh Flats. He then passes the turn to me. I draw and play an Aganjo Seat of the Empire as land for turn. I follow it up by paying one to cast Wayfarer's Bobble. I then pass to Mitch. Mitch draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire as land for turn. He then cracks it and pays one life to fetch a Blood Crypt, which he shocks in, taking two damage. Mitch then pays one to cast a Sensei's Divining Top. He then passes the turn to Natasha. Natasha draws and then plays a Memorial to Genius. It comes into play tapped and she passes the turn to Ian. On Natasha's end step, Ian pays one life and cracks his Marsh Flats to fetch up a Godless Shrine, which he has ETB tapped. Ian then starts his turn and draws a card. He then plays a Swamp and casts an Arcane Signet and passes the turn. I untap, draw, and play an Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth as land for turn. Having no other turn two plays, I decide to crack my bobble now to fetch up a basic planes and put it into play tapped. I then pass the turn to Mitch. Mitch untaps, draws, and plays his own Urborg Tomb of Yakmoth. He then passes to Natasha. Natasha untaps, draws, and plays a mountain as land for turn. She then pays two for a goblin electromancer. Having no other play, she passes to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and plays a cabal coffers as land for turn. He then pays three for a welcoming vampire and passes the turn. I untap, draw, and play a reflecting pool as land for turn. Paying three, I cast an Aetheros God of Passage. With nothing else I can do, I move to end step. On my end step, Mitch activates Divining Top to look at the top three cards of his library and put them back in any order. Mitch then starts his turn, draws, and plays a Command Tower. Paying two, he casts a Profane Tutor. It ETBs with two suspend counters. 
He then passes the turn. Natasha untaps, draws, and plays a Cascade Bluffs. Paying three, she then casts an Ashnod's Altar and passes the turn to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and plays a Plains' Land for turn. Tapping Cabal Coffers and the Arcane Signet, he casts his commander, Elinda the Dusk Rose, leaving one floating black mana. When Elinda ETBs, welcoming vampire triggers, and Ian draws a card. Then using one floating black mana, he casts Skull Clamp. Moving to combat, Ian swings Welcoming Vampire at me for 2 damage, he then passes the turn. I untap, draw, and play Plains' Land for turn. Paying 4, I cast my commander, Radodrobic of Urborg. I then pass the turn to Mitch. Mitch untaps and removes a Suspend Counter from Profane Tutor. He then draws a card for turn. Playing a Swamp, he then taps 4 to cast his commander, Prosper Tombbound. He resolves Prosper's instep trigger by exiling the top card of his library, which he can play until the end of his next turn. Mitch then passes his turn. Natasha untaps, draws, and plays a Reliquary Tower. Sacrificing Goblin Electromancer to Ashnod's altar, she floats two colorless mana and casts her commander, the Locust God. When Goblin dies, Elinda gets a plus one plus one counter. Natasha then passes the turn to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and plays a Swamp. He activates Cabal Coffers and pays 6 mana to cast Elspeth, Sun's Champion. Ticking up Elspeth's loyalty counter to 5, he creates 3 1 1 soldier creature tokens. Ian moves to combat and attacks Mitch with Welcoming Vampire. Unable to stop flying, Mitch takes 2. He then pays 1 to equip the Skull Clamp to a soldier token, which dies, letting him draw 2 cards and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Alinda. Ian then passes the turn to me. I untap, draw, and pay 2 for a Felwar Stone. I then pay another 2 mana to cast a Lightning Greaves and equip it to Radodrobic. I then pass the turn to Mitch. Mitch untaps and removes the last counter from his Profane Tutor. Because Prosper is out, Mitch creates a treasure token because he cast a spell from exile. Ian realizes he missed a card draw trigger from Welcoming Vampire when his tokens were created, so we let him draw the card. Mitch now done with his upkeep steps, draws for turn. He then plays the Swamp Exiled under Prosper making him another treasure token. Mitch then pays two for an arcane signet and follows that up by casting Brea's Apprentice for three mana. Brea creates a 1-1 Thopter on ETB. Mitch then pays one to activate Divining Top and moves to instep where he then exiles Ignite the Future under Prosper and passes the turn. Natasha untaps, draws, and creates a 1-1 Flying Insect token with haste thanks to her commander. She then plays an island as land for turn. Paying one, she casts Serum Visions, which then lets her scry two and draw a card. When she draws a card, Natasha will make another 1-1 insect token. She then activates Locust God's ability by sacrificing an insect to Ashnod for two floating colorless mana and tapping two lands. This will trigger Alinda and she gets another plus one plus one counter. Drawing a card, she makes another 1-1 insect token and discards a mountain. Sacrificing another insect token, Alinda gets another plus one plus one counter, and Natasha makes two colorless floating mana to help pay for Perforos, God of the Forge. She then passes the turn to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and plays a Plains as land for turn. Activating Cabal Coffers, he makes six floating black mana. Using three of it, he casts a Morbid Opportunist. This triggers Welcoming Vampire, and he draws a card. Preparing for the possible wheel from Natasha, he upticks Elspeth to 7 and makes 3 more 1-1 one -one soldier tokens. He then casts Gift of Immortality and attaches it to Linda. Gift allows the creature enchanted with it to return to the battlefield when it dies. Paying 2, he then casts Zulaport Cutthroat. Paying 1, he equips Skull Clamp to a 1-1 one -one token. When the token dies, Morphid Opportunist triggers as well as the Skull Clamp, so Ian draws 3 cards. Zulafort Cutthroat also triggers, and we all lose 1 life and Ian gains 1. Moving to combat, Ian swings Alinda at Natasha for 6 damage. She blocks with an Insect token. Before combat damage resolves, she sacrifices the token to keep Ian from gaining life. When the Insect dies, Alinda gets another plus 1 plus 1, making her now a 7-7. Seven seven. Moving to instep, Ian discards an Orzhov Guildgate. I untap, draw, and pay 3 mana and 2 life to cast Swift End, targeting Alinda. Ian has no response, so Alinda is destroyed. Gift of Immortality on Alinda triggers when she dies, so Alinda returns to the battlefield. When Alinda dies, she makes an amount of 1-1 vampire creature tokens equal to her power. 
Since Alinda was a 7-7, you make 7 vampire tokens. Welcoming vampire sees these 1-1s one enter, so Ian draws a card. Zulaport triggers, and we lose one life. Morbid Opportunist will also trigger, and he draws a card. I then pay 3 and cast a Meat Hook Masker, where X is equal to 1. 13 of Ian's creatures die, and 1 of Mitch's does as well, making each player lose 14 life, and I gain 14. Ian then puts Alinda back into the command zone, and since Zulaport sees the creatures that died with it, each opponent loses 13 life. I then play a tapped godless shrine. Not wanting to risk my commander, I skip combat and pass the turn. Mitch untaps, draws, and casts an ignite the future exiled by his commander. This lets him make a treasure. Mitch exiles the top three cards from his library, revealing a field of the dead, a mountain, and lightning greaves. He plays a field of the dead as land per turn, and this lets him make another treasure. Paying two, he casts lightning greaves and equips it to his commander. Sacking a treasure, he then activates Divining Top and Freya's Apprentice using another treasure to pay for the activation cost and exiles a Soul Ring. He then casts Soul Ring from Exile, making another treasure. Moving in step, Mitch exiles a Mind Stone with his commander and passes the turn. Natasha untaps, draws, and makes an Insect Token. When the Insect Token ETBs, Perforos triggers, and we each take 2 damage. Playing an island as land for turn, she then pays 5 for a Psychosis Crawler. Its power and toughness are equal to the cards in hand, which is currently 3. Additionally, when Natasha draws a card, each of her opponents loses 1 life. She then casts Winds of Change, forcing everyone to shuffle their hand into their library and draw cards equal to the amount they had in their hand previously. I sadly lose my Massacre Worm and El Schnorn and draw 2 new cards. Because Natasha is drawing 3 cards, we will each take 6 damage because of Perforos and the Psychosis Crawler. Moving to combat, she swings the Locust God at Elspeth. Ian declares no blocks, and her loyalty drops to 2. She then passes the turn to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and plays a Caves of Coleos. He then activates his Cabal Coffers, making 7 mana. Using 1 mana, he casts Soul Ring. He then follows it up by paying 4 for a Smothering Tithe. Using two more mana, he casts a Demonic Tutor to find any old card he wants. Ian then asks the table to not attack him if he deals with the Perforos problem. Mitch and I agree. Ian then casts Anguish and Making, targeting Perforos. Natasha has no response, so her spooky god is exiled. He then uptakes Elpsmith and makes three more 1 1 soldier tokens. Welcoming Vampire triggers, and Ian draws a card. He then passes the turn to me. I untap, draw, and Ian Smothering Tithe triggers. I refuse to pay the two now and for the rest of the game because I never will for this card. Paying three, I cast a Relic of Legends. I follow that up by paying five for Krav the Unredeemed. Aethros is now a creature because my devotion to black and white is seven or greater. Using Relic, I tap Krav, paying one mana into their ability to sacrifice Aethros, which will let me draw one card, gain one life, and put a plus one plus one counter on Krav. Rotodropic triggers, and I make a non-legendary token copy of Aetheros. Morbid also triggers, and Ian draws a card. Since I drew a card, Ian makes another treasure. I then move to combat and swing my commander at Natasha for 3 damage. She blocks with 1 insect token. Meat hook triggers, and I gain 1 life. I then pass the turn to Mitch. On my end step, Mitch activates Divining Top. He then casts a Vampiric Tutor, using 1 treasure and paying 2 life. Searching for any old card, he puts it on top of his library. Mitch then starts his turn, draws, and doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe either. Playing the Mountain, exiled under Prosper, Mitch makes another treasure. Continuing his turn, he pays 1 mana for a Viridian Lawn Bow. He then moves the Lightning Greaves to Brea's Apprentice so he can equip the bow to Prosper, and then returns the Greaves back to Prosper. Mitch pays 2 and casts the Mind Stone exiled with Prosper, and makes another treasure. Activating Divining Top by paying 1 mana into its ability, he rearranges the top 3 cards of his library. He then uses Bray's ability by sacrificing a treasure to exile the top card of his library. It's a Mayhem Devil, and he casts it, making another treasure. Sacking 2 treasures, Mitch uses Mayhem's triggers to shoot down the Psychosis Crawler. Natasha has no responses, so it dies. Ian draws a card for Morbid, and I gain 1 life because an opponent's creature died. Mitch then casts Murderous Rider using the mana from his treasures. 
moving the graves to Ryder, Mitch then swings at Natasha. She blocks with an insect token, and Mitch gains two life because of the lifelink on Murderous. Me hook triggers, and I gain one life. He then moves the graves back to Prosper. At instep, Castle Lothwain is exiled under Prosper. Natasha untaps, draws, and makes an insect token. Smothering tithe triggers, and Natasha, like myself and Mitch, does not pay for the two. So Ian makes a treasure. Going forward, I'll only call out when we do pay the two. And spoiler, I don't think we do. <laughs> Natasha pays six and casts Chandra Flamecaller. Using Chandra's zero ability, Natasha discards her hand and draws the amount of cards she discarded. She discards a Molten Psyche and, I think, a Laboratory Maniac, which lets her draw two and she makes two more insects. She then plays a Mountain as land for turn and sacrifices a bug. Morbid Opportunist triggers and Ian draws a card. I gain one life from Meat Hook and Mayhem Devil has one damage to flame at any target and Mitch chooses my beautiful face. She then casts a Lightning Greaves and equips it to her commander. Moving in combat, she swings Locust God at me for four in the air. I can't block and take the four. She then passes the turn to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and plays a Plains as land for turn. Making eight floating black mana with Cabal, Ian casts Alinda for six mana. He draws a card from Welcoming Vampire when she ETBs. Ian then casts a Viscera Seer and follows it up with a Cordial Vampire. Paying another two mana, he casts a Blood Artist. Upticking Elspeth, he makes another three 1-1 one -one soldier creature tokens. Moving to combat, Ian swings three of the 1-1s one at Natasha. She declares no blocks and goes to 20. Paying three, he casts Teesa Orzov Scion. He then passes the turn. I untap, draw, and pay three for Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Then I cast Murderous Rider. Paying one, I sack both Vito and Murderous Rider using Krav's ability to draw two cards, gain two life, and put two more counters on Krav. When this happens, Ian will get two triggers for Blood Artist. He targets Natasha and I for one damage each. With the Blood Artist trigger on the stack, Mitch taps Prosper to shoot down the Cordial Vampire. Meat Hook triggers and I gain one life. Morbid Opportunist will trigger as well and Ian draws a card. Then Alinda gets a counter. When Cordial Vampire dies, it'll put one plus one plus one counter on each vampire Ian controls. But before that happens, Mitch sacrifices two treasures so he can snipe the Blood Artist and Basir Seer before the Cordial's death trigger resolves. Both Blood Artist triggers are aimed at me. Meat Hook triggers, so I gain two life. Alinda gets another two counters, and then all vampire creatures get a counter when Cordial Vampire dies. When my two creatures were sacrificed, Blood Artist still saw those, and Ian targets me. Mayhem Devil also has two damage to pain any target with, and Mitch targets my face again. Radadrabic creates a non-legendary 2-2 copy of Vito. With Aethero still out, I target Mitch to be the opponent to either let me return Vito and Murderous Rider back to my hand, or pay three life for each creature to stay in the graveyard. He lets them return to hand. Before I gain my two life from Krav, Mitch asks Ian to sack two treasures so he can kill my Vito. I tell Ian I will target Mitch since he's trying to take out my stuff if he lets my copy token of Vito stay. Ian decides to let Vito stay out so I can target Mitch to lose two life. Ian then sacks two treasures for Mitch to shoot the mayhem triggers at my Vito token copy, killing it. Additionally, Meat Hook triggers, and each opponent loses three life because two of my creatures were sacrificed and my token copy of Vito died. Using Relic's ability to tap legendaries for mana, I recast Vito. I then pass the turn to Mitch. Mitch untaps, draws, and plays Castle Locked away in his land for turn, making him a treasure. Field of the Dead also triggers, and Mitch creates a 2-2 zombie. Activating Divining Top, Mitch looks at the top three cards of his library. Paying into Bray's Apprentice ability using a treasure, Mitch sends Mayhem's trigger from the Sacrifice token at me for one damage. Bray's Apprentice ability then resolves, and Chaos Warp is exiled from the top of his library. He can cast it until the end of his next turn. Paying four, he then casts a Sad Robot and puts a Mountain onto the battlefield tap. He then pays 1 into Divining Top, again to check out the top 3 cards of his library, and then moves to end step where he exiles a mountain under Prosper and passes the turn to Natasha. Natasha starts her upkeep, draws, and makes an insect token. Paying 1, she casts Brainstorm, which lets her draw 3 cards and put 2 cards from her hand back on top of her library. 
This makes her another three insect tokens. Ian makes four treasures, and then Natasha uses Chandra's zero ability to discard three cards and draw three more to make four insect tokens. She now has a total of 11 insects. Paying five, she casts Reforge the Soul, forcing each player to discard their hand and draw seven more cards. With Soul on the stack, Ian taps his Soul Ring and sacks three more treasures to cast Ink Shield before it is wheeled away. Mayhem has three triggers, and Mitch throws them at Tessa. After a bit of politicking, Ian responds by sacking three of his soldier tokens using Tessa's ability and exiles my Aetheros. Mayhem has three triggers, and they all go to my face. Before that resolves, Mitch holds priority and attempts to Chaos Warp my Meat Hook. In response, I pay one using Relic's ability to tap a legendary and sacrifice my token of Aetheros to Krav's ability. Just a little note here is you can't use Relic to tap a non-legendary token and I forgot my Aetheros wasn't a legendary anymore so technically I couldn't have done this but it doesn't change the outcome of the game. Anyways, Mitch then taps Prosper to kill Vito. In response, I tap Vito for mana with Relic's ability to pay Krav's sacrifice cost. Rotodropic makes a token copy when Vito dies. Meat Hook triggers when both my creatures die making the table lose two. Since Meat Hook is still out, I will gain three life from those creatures dying and use Vito's trigger to take Mitch out. The remainder of Mayhem's triggers and Chaos Warp fall off the stack when Mitch dies, so Teesa stays around. With those triggers resolved, Reforge the Soul resolves next. We all discard our hands and draw seven new cards. Ian makes 14 more treasures and Nat makes seven more insects. She then plays an island and casts an Is It Signet. She passes the turn to Ian. On Natasha's end step, Ian casts Vampiric Tutor. Ian untaps, draws, and plays an isolated chapel. Activating Cabal Coffers, he makes nine floating mana and uses one of it for a Blade of the Blood Chief and equips it to Linda. He then casts a Massacre Worm. Natasha and I make a deal that if she sacrifices her board in response to the worm, I will send those veto triggers for Meat Hook's life gain at Ian and give her a turn of immunity. While the Meat Hook triggers are on the stack, he sacks three creatures to Teyessa and exiles Vito. Vito still sees the three life gain from Ian's creatures dying, and I throw that damage at him. Then Vito is exiled. Alinda gains double the counters from Blade of the Blood Chief, which means Ian puts 42 counters on Alinda. I gain 19 life from Meat Hook. Ian also drew from Morbid. Moving to combat, he swings his huge Alinda at me for lethal damage and welcoming Vampire, Morbid, and Teyessa at Natasha. I'm knocked out of the game, Natasha is barely hanging on, and Ian gained an insane amount of life going to 96. He then passes the turn to Natasha. Natasha untaps, draws, and casts a capsize, attempting to return Alinda back to Ian's hand. In response, Ian sacrifices Alinda and two soldiers to Teyessa's ability. We lost track of how many counters Alinda had, but at a minimum of 70 vampire 1-1 one, one creature tokens are created. Morbid triggers and Ian draws a card. Natasha uses Chandra's minus ability to deal 4 damage to each creature on the battlefield. Chandra goes to the graveyard and Ian loses all his creatures but Massacre Worm and Welcoming Vampire. She then recasts Locust God and passes the turn to Ian. Ian untaps, draws, and moves to combat, swinging his last two creatures at Natasha. She is only able to block the Massacre Worm and takes four from the Welcoming Vampire. Ian wins! Good game, all. Thank you so much for staying till the end. This was just an insane game with so many <laughs> triggers. It kind of was like a little hard to keep track of uh, at points. But congrats to Ian for winning. And as always, we like to call out a card that we felt like deserves an MVP shout out. So basically something that kind of did an impactful play that helped, you know, the person win or you know, really influence how the game went. And it's kind of hard to make a decision on this one because I feel like there were some cards that just put in a lot of work. Like Mayhem Devil on Mitch's side did a lot of damage and just really took advantage of the fact that Ian was making a lot of treasures with Smothering Tithe and having to like, you know, do so much sacrificing. So just being able to throw that much damage around is really huge. The other piece too that I think for what really helped Ian get ahead was just how much card draw he was able to have early on in the game. So with like Welcoming Vampire, Orbit Opportunist, and Skull Clamp out, he was just drawing an insane amount of cards. And it also didn't help that 
you know, Mitch and I were activating his Cabal coffers with our herb orgs. So he just had an insane amount of mana the whole game and tons of card advantage. So that was just really cool to see like how well his deck like popped off. And because of that, I think, again, it makes it a little bit harder to narrow down like which card probably was the MVP. And I think I'm going to have to settle on uh, Teasa, uh, the Orzhov Scion, because she was a sack outlet that was able to get rid of threats on the board, like my Aethros and Vito, and just being able to have the ability to essentially instant speed remove whatever threat that's coming at you on the table just made it really hard to answer him, especially when he was getting Alinda counters, like, for days and just making tons of vampires so it was one of those games where it's like there's so many different threats everyone's deck is really strong who do we answer and so i think that was just a really great time at least to play hopefully watch too but anyways i hope that rambling made sense and i'm really glad that ian got to show off his uh, version of alinda because i have alinda as well so we joke around and say that we're the alinda squad because of it and it was just fun to see his version of the deck, you know, do its thing. So again, thank you so much for, for watching and hanging out and have a good one. Bye.